So at this point, we've arrived at this slightly simpler form of the Schrodinger equation. But we're actually nowhere nearer to obtaining an expression for xi. So now we're going to move on to the step that is pretty much involved in uh, most solutions of differential equations, is that we're going to tr do a bit of guesswork. We're going to try to guess what this xi should look like. And in our first step of our guesswork, we're going to first observe that as y tends towards large numbers, this differential equation is going to be approximated by this expression over here. And this is indeed the case because as y tends towards larger numbers, this, is going, this term is going to be insignificant. This is just a constant. So this y squared term is going to completely dominate. So that is why this approximation, uh, approximation is true. So uh, Griffiths proposes an approximate solution to this approximate differential equation. So you see that there are two layers of approximations. So the approximation that Griffiths proposes is that xi is going to be approximately be equal to this expression over here. And the reason how he arrived at this expression here is really just a combination of uh, guesswork experience and probably divine uh, inspiration. So there is really no way I can prove this to you. This is just a part of our guesswork. So this is going to be an approximate solution to this differential equation. And then as you can see that if our xi is indeed going to look something like this as y tends towards larger numbers, you can expect that this term to be to be zero. So b here should be equal to zero because we will want our xi to be normalizable. And as you can see this e to the power of y squared over 2, this is hardly normalizable. So immediately we can just ignore this. So now we're going to focus on this. So now we're going to focus on the fact that as y tends towards uh, large numbers, our xi is going to be approximately be equal to this expression over here. And then it, it's easy to check that this is indeed an approximate solution to this differential equation. So we can try to work that out here. So let's take the first derivative of xi. So we can just use the chain rule. So we just retain this term and then we integrate, uh, we differentiate the exponent. This just becomes negative y. And then moving on to the second derivative. So we use the product rule. So we retain this term and then we differentiate this. So it's just equal to 1. And then now we retain this term and then we differentiate this. So negative y. So in the end you get something like this. We have y squared minus 1 times a times e to the power of y squared over 2. So we get y squared minus 1 xi. So this is our expression for xi. So you can see that this is indeed an approximate solution. You can see that both of these terms here are pretty similar, except for this minus 1 over here. And as y tends towards infinity, as y tends towards larger numbers, of course it's, it is going to completely dominate over this negative 1. So this is indeed an approximate solution as y tends towards large numbers. So what this tells us is that as uh, for our function, the xi over here, we still don't know what this is going to be equal to, but we know that as y tends towards infinity, it is going to behave in a way that looks something like this. And I hope you see why we chose uh, y squared over 2 instead of uh, y to the power of 3 over 4 or uh, y squared over 3 or something else, uh, something like that. Because as you can see here, we chose y squared over 2 because everything works out here in our differentiation so that it gives us this y squared over here, that which would look like this expression over here. So I hope you see why we chose negative y squared over 2. But uh, that aside, we, you can see that at this point that our xi, we still don't know what it is, but we know that as y tends towards larger numbers, it is going to behave in such a way that it resembles something like this. So this is a very, very important clue. So uh, for our last step of our guesswork, we're going to propose that our xi to be equal to something like this, a function h of y times e to the power of negative y squared over 2. So this is our guess over here. We're going to guess that xi is going to be equal to some function times e to the power of negative y squared over 2. So I hope you see the purpose of all these approximations over here. And through all these approximations, we found that as y tends towards infinity, this function xi is going to behave in such a way that it sort of resembles this function over here. And so that's why it motivated us to propose this uh, guess over here. And you can see that it motivated this e to the power of negative y squared over 2 term over here. So now we're going to set off with 
this uh, guess over here. We're going to guess that xi is going to look something like this. So at this point, if we want to find our solution, if we want to find an expression for xi, we can now shift our focus on finding what h of y should be. So we don't know if xi is indeed going to look something like this, but eventually we will see that uh, it will look something like this. But at this point, we still don't know. So now we're going to focus on finding the h of y over here.